Good morning. Karina, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? How, how are things in, uh, not in Greece, in Romania, because you're not in Greece? Yeah, beautiful. I'm uh, somewhere in the mountains. So enjoying the beautiful Romanian mountains. Mm. No, so I'm, I'm really good. I'm really good to be mm -hmm. with you. Okay, so we're in the third month of um, going deep into the future fit mindsets model. And we've covered curiosity in April. We've covered love the difficulty in May. And we're covering always serve in June. So today about always serve. I know this is your favorite one, Harry. I am working on it myself. But always serve is, from my point of view, one of the most difficult ones. How do you think about that? What do you think? Yeah, uh, I, I think we need just need to, to do a little bit of a recap as to where we are in the journey. Mm. And uh, I think uh, what we started to do, you and I, was to think of you know, ways and um, mindsets and attitudes that will take us to the next level as, uh, as humans and as teams. And uh, obviously, we started with uh, the, bigger, uh, the bigger part, which is curiosity, which is really uh, understanding what is really happening in the world. Uh, so that is, that's the first thing. And then we said, uh, then moving to action, that we need to, to really see life as it is and to really make the most of it and embracing the challenges and, uh, and the difficulties is, is, a very, is a huge part of it. And now as part of the, the whole, let's say, ideas to how do we, let's say, place ourselves to life, we say we, the next, uh, the next uh, milestone in the journey is to serve, is to always serve. And the only reason I'm just making this uh, prologue is to say that actually all of those three and actually four, because we have the last one, they are fully, fully interrelated and interconnected. So I think when we discuss always serve, we need, just need to be mindful that this is um, an extension of the discussions we had uh, before. Mm -hmm. And who's watching this inside the, our community, they can also scroll up and see the discussions we have on each of the mindsets. But yes, it's important to say that the, the model is uh, something that uh, is useful for teams, for individuals, for yeah. leaders, in order to look at the future in a better way, right? Because yeah. we're, we're talking on a different level here. We're talking about mindsets. We don't talk about skills and tools. Yeah, we talk about skills sometimes, but inside yeah. the mindsets. Yeah. 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 All right. So back to always serve, always serve. And I'm going to say this because we uh, coupled it with the um, elements of nature and always serve is about earth. Yeah. It's the nurturing power, the unity and interdependence. We are all one. The motherly care. Hmm. Yeah. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. So, OK, mindsets. And again, as you said, what is a mindset? And mindset is all about how do we think, how do we think about the world and uh, the, the lenses that we are using. And I quote uh, sometimes how, how you, you said it so nicely. So basically, when we say always serve in a nutshell, what we're saying is that uh, we, are, we are seeing life with a, with a giving and a gratitude mindset. And actually, we do that because we, uh, the more we live, the more we understand that uh, life as it is also life in uh, you know, organizations or in families or in any, any part of it, it's actually not about us. So here is, and we will discuss the paradox, that life is not about us, however, it starts from us. So there is always this uh, beautiful interplay and uh, sometimes uh, you know, contradiction and contrast between how much do we look outside in terms of uh, helping, giving, uh, serving, Versus how much do we look inside in terms of, uh, you know, uh, growing, protecting, uh, taking care of us. So that's a big, uh, let's say, first of all, a big layer that we would need to unpack today. And mm -hmm. basically the, the premise that you and I have been making all along is that we are better placed and uh, in terms of uh, happiness, meaning, uh, skills, if we take this outside in perspective, we really understand um how do we how do we have an impact uh, and 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 even as i say that karina i'm not talking about you know generic themes where you know everybody's today is you know let's change the world and let's do you know do great things 
I think we need to be very granular and very specific as to what exactly does it mean on a daily basis to say that we are serving, we're always serving. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to do that because throughout the month, uh, talking with people and giving up, uh, giving uh, challenges to them, uh, I did find this, okay, I'm always serving, but sometimes I need to be serving myself. I need to stop serving the others and start serving myself because otherwise I would not be able to serve mm -hmm. the others. And we were talking and we, Harry did write um, an article on uh, why, uh, on the paradox of the oxygen mass, yeah, putting it first or not. But always serve is, um, I think it's difficult because we live in a society where we are somehow taught that, well, it, it was this capitalist society where, okay, I need to be doing well and then I don't care about the others. We are slowly going towards take care of yourself, you know, the well-being, the um, mindfulness, all of that, which is centered with, with us. I have to be in the center of the, the, the action of the caregiving. And now we're going towards always serve, um, going to, towards the outside. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw in a big word that everybody's using, which is empathy. And we both know that empathy is, I don't know, cognitive and effective. Yeah, cognitive, I understand what you're thinking. And empathy, I can feel what you're feeling. And then we go towards compassion when we need to act based on the empathy that we're feeling. Um, what's empathy got to do inside? Always serve. Yeah, well, it has everything to do. And again, let's unpack the, unpack the term. You and I have mm -hmm. done that many, many times. But uh, in the world, let's put it in context, in the world that we are living, which is so much uh, polarized, so much um, distract, we are distracted, so much we are really do not listen. We don't really listen as to you know, what people are telling us. Uh, we don't have enough time. We, we are very much also uh, focused on the immediate result and the media satisfaction, the gratification. In this world, uh, empathy, empathy is a super weapon. And I say that in the most uh, kind and the most uh, positive way. Um, and as you and I know that empathy is not, is not just about uh, sympathy. It's, it's all about the, the attentive, the real, the active listening, the really understanding. So how can I understand you, Karina? How can I understand your perspective, where you are coming from, what's important for you? Mm -hmm. If I do that, a lot of things are happening. First of all, you will be feeling that I treat you with honor. I honor you, not just I listen to you, I honor you. Um, and by doing that, I am I'm creating rapport. And by doing that, what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, lowering any defensiveness that you might have because of your own beliefs. And it's much easier for you and I to have a conversation in terms of what are we similar to, uh, instead of just uh, trying to to win an argument as to uh, where we are different. Mm -hmm. So that's a big, big thing, especially when you are uh, uh, setting yourself up to be a role model, like if you are a leader or if you mm -hmm. are a parent or if you are a teacher. Mm -hmm. So empathy has everything to do with, with serving. It is, it is step number one. Okay, and let's connect it with curiosity because you did mention listening and this one... Uh, word that uh, I heard from you, which is generative type of listening, yeah, generative listening, where you listen so that you can <clears throat> go further and create a build on what the other person is saying. And this is one thing that it's connected to empathy, that the beginning of empathy is listening, but then I need to be having the ability to understand and feel what you're feeling in a way that, I, okay, this is about you, it's not about me. And it is, uh, I'm going to come here with some examples. Um, last week I was with a, with a small team and uh, we were eating. We had to lunch as we do when you're working. And uh, they started talking about stuff. I don't know, their kids. Nobody was listening. Everyone was talking about themselves and nobody was listening. And I did, I don't know if they felt it, but I did feel that they hurt each other. I'm talking about an issue my kid has. And then you tell me, oh, you should have done that. You should have done differently and da, 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 and giving you solutions and explaining how better I did stuff. And it's like, oh, my God. You people are 
a team, you're working mm -hmm. together, so you're not listening. Listening is a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we need to be having empathy in order to be able to always serve, to look at the others first. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And if I may say, Karina, the way, I, and I love your example, because this is what we see it every day. And actually, when we go, for example, to restaurants, what we see is people actually on their mobile phones, on their smartphones. So mm -hmm. everybody is looking into, into themselves through a gadget. Whereas what we really need to do now, and we will now go full speed into what the always serve means, uh, we need to do the opposite, actually. And this this is the this is the beautiful paradox. This is and this is also a philosophical paradox. And I think what we're doing here and I we are um, you know defining the various layers of uh, you know of the mindset and the way we really want to uh, to show up on, on a daily basis. On a daily basis, not just uh, you know nice things, rhetoric ideas, but how do we how do we talk about uh, you know turning them to action? Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you did tell me, I mean, I think uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, something that really stuck me, which was, um, Krina, make it so that with each interaction that you have, the other person comes out with something. It, it, it's a good interaction for them, something nice, something wonderful for them. So this is a, yeah. this is part of always serve, yeah, yeah. having interactions yeah. with people and then making sure that the other person is, going out with something nice, something interesting, something wonderful. Exactly. Let's make it even more granular. And let me mm. take you back to the conversation we had uh, more than a year ago. It's exactly. And thank you for reminding that. And I think what we were talking about, uh, because you and I were also serving clients. So mm -hmm. we, are, we are having our businesses. And one of the things that we are trying to do as professionals is to, is to serve them well. And I think what we were saying is that to serve well somebody, you need to have at least three things. And I'm just now quoting the discussion, but I, for me, it's always a compass. I'm always asking myself after any interaction, was it easy? So was it an easy interaction, frictionless, in the sense that, you know, the way that the discussion, the way the, the requirements, the way the, you know, the, uh, the expectations was easy. Yeah, that's number one. Number two, was it exciting? Was it exciting? So was it something that, you know, created enough energy? You know, people were smiling, people were thinking, people were saying, wow, wow, that's, that's really, really interesting. Because we know that if you get at this state, this emotion, positive emotional state, you learn. And number three, connected to that, was it educational? So was there something after this interaction that people really uh, were left with? An idea, as you say sometimes, an aha something that will make a mind click and after you are not not anymore with them do you actually you are with them because they are thinking about it so for me those three e's are very very practical it's a very mm -hmm. practical way of saying have i done have i been a good professional today mm -hmm. and have i been a good leader today you know with also my my people or with my partners so three E's, easy, exciting, <clears throat> and educational. Yeah. And this is how we serve our clients. And this is how leaders should, should maybe serve their teams. Yeah. You know? yeah. Okay, yeah. very, very interesting. Now we, we go back to memory lane, Harry. <laughs> We're supposed to talk about it today. Yeah. Good. Let me throw in another big word. Another yeah. big word that we're, we're, we need to understand and talk about when we uh, talk about always serve, which is vulnerability. And we both know that vulnerability has maybe sometimes been understood wrong, right? Vulnerability is showing my weaknesses all the time to everyone. No, it's not. Yeah, vulnerability. And we know the work of Brené Brown with the courage and vulnerability stuck together because you cannot be vulnerable unless you're courageous. But then going out and speaking about your weaknesses all the time, it's not courageous. So yeah. vulnerability, true vulnerability, as you say it, is something uh, that needs to, has to do with the trust, right? And with the connection that I have with the others. So what is true vulnerability? Yeah, I would say, and I love the, some words that you use, Trina, definitely it's about courage. So mm -hmm. obviously one of the things, and we, and I think we need to double down on real, some, some real fundamental values in these discussions. So mm -hmm. one fundamental value is courage. So I'm stepping up when it's not easy. So vulnerability is actually I'm, I'm strong enough 
to uh, to accept and to admit that I'm uh, I have questions. I don't have the answers. Uh, I'm humble enough, so I'm putting learning before my ego. Mm. So learning is more important than my ego. I am um, um, I'm actually telling you that um, I need your help. So I'm I'm embracing an opportunity to say that I love to to listen to you, and I love to hear what you have to say. Uh, and by doing that, uh, obviously you're becoming more relatable. That's for sure. I think one thing that we need to to be very careful and let's let's circle back to empathy. And you said it very nicely. When you're vulnerable, you don't necessarily need to download all your emotions unfiltered. One of the things that really sets apart successful people is the, and you know very well, impulse control. So you are able to emotionally regulate and you're able to have this, what the Stoics were calling uh, temperance. So you you are able to manage also, you'll be able to, to control and you're able to um, uh, sort of, you know, uh, you know, fine-tune the discussion, not just uh, whatever I feel, I'm just throwing it out. By the way, this is not also good for the other person. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you you should not actually, you don't have any right uh, to, to put all your um, sort of uh, negativity, if I may say, or uh, uh, I don't know, non-positive mm -hmm. thinking into uh so it, it's a delicate balance and definitely if you are the higher you are as a leader the more you can use vulnerability with a skill we can say much more on that but i would like to to hear your view because i know that you're also very much on understanding this term how do you see it I think there's a fine balance, as you said, between uh, being strong and being vulnerable. Uh, it does connect with uh, with courage, to have the courage to show yourself as being imperfect to people around you. Just uh, not only for the purpose of connecting with the other people, but also for this purpose. I am showing you that I'm not perfect, that I have maybe, as you said, questions, maybe I have um, um I don't know, dilemmas, things I don't know how to uh, tackle. Uh, maybe I have made mistakes and so on. The art of hiding mistakes and showing ourselves as perfect is not working. So I am always feeling when somebody's trying to you know, present themselves as being the... And uh, I don't connect with that person. So I think vulnerability and showing bits of us, not, you know... What is appropriate to show in a professional relationship? Is it appropriate to show the fact that, I don't know, haven't slept last night because my kid was feverish? Might be. It depends. Is it a woman that has the same kid? <laughs> I don't know. But it it depends. I'm uh, To me, the vulnerability is uh, very much connected with the, you know, the emotional download you mentioned. And because we're wondering, we're going about in the world, they say, oh, I'm vulnerable. Oh, I'm vulnerable. Uh, this happened to me, and this happened to me, and this happened to me, and this happened to me. And we're making it a story that yeah. could help others, but at the same time, yeah. how much is too much and how much is too little. Yeah. And even though the true vulnerability is connected to courage, I think the other type of vulnerability, of, you know, downloading everything out, it's a bit of, inconsiderate inconsiderance for other people mm. and maybe it's connected with a bit of ego i don't know i yeah. don't know yeah. Ma, but um yeah. yeah yeah no very very well said come two, two, two thoughts two thoughts are coming in my mind one is that um uh, nothing in life is just one thing so we're talking about vulnerability and let's uh, assume that now we are stepping into the shoes of a leader yeah mm -hmm. so what what would we advise him or her you be vulnerable, but as we said, it's not enough just to be vulnerable. You need to be vulnerable, and I would say that you need to have a strong sense of um, direction and purpose. So assuming that you're having a team, and you are in front of your team, and basically what you want, you want to serve the team. So obviously, you serve the team by humanizing yourself, the relationship, and you are saying, I, I am not unlike you in the sense that I also... To, to your word, I have my dilemmas. I have my, I have my doubts, mm -hmm. and at the same time, 
I am pursuing passionately a purpose. And this mm -hmm. is where we need to go. And this mm -hmm. is what we think, I think that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And this is how we are going to get the best out of working together. So you do two things at the same time. One is the humanization. And the other thing is you need to put, you know, um, you know, the, the fact that, uh, you know, you have a crystal clear and a crisp direction as to how do you see. And you need to convey the confidence. Here is what it is. You are vulnerable, but you are confident at the same time. And here is the, the other thing. Why you're confident? Because you have loved the difficulty, because you have done difficult things. So here are the connections between the serving and the difficulty. If you have done difficult things in your life and you have been through hell and through fire and you know what it means and you've gone, you've gone the other way around, then you are. it's very easy for you to have vulnerable moments. They are beautiful. They are humanizing. They are relatable. If you haven't gone into this difficulty, then the vulnerability is becoming the emotional download, sometimes the uh, nagging, the you're adja, just advertising, complaining, you, complaining, complaining. Yes. <laughs> and you don't, and you really don't, don't want to get there. Maybe a final comment, a final yeah. comment that I'm coming back to the context of the world we are using, we are living today. You know, this world is a world is very much a sort of um, uh, giving us comforts giving us, uh, we have discussed it many times, you know, the culture of safety. We have to feel safe. And, uh, you know, you hear also the vocabulary, uh, triggers, uh, trauma. So there is a lot to be said that we need to take a step back and to need to actually um, uh, sort of say, do I want to be a fragile human being or do I want to be an anti-fragile human being? Because if I'm always looking myself on from the vulnerability perspective, at least from the victimization, that's not good. That's not good for me. And definitely it's not good for, for the people I'm trying to serve. Mm -hmm. okay. I think this is the perfect moment to connect this with the leaders, leaders as parents. The concept that we stumbled upon in a podcast with Adam Grant, Simon Sinek and Brené Brown. <clears throat> and when asked about how a leader should be, Simon said, a parent. And both Brené and Adam, oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 we don't want parents over here. And actually, we do. We, we want bits of parenthood in the leadership because um, being a parent means it's, it's a lot connected to always serve. Because what? I'm taking care of my kids, not for the benefit of getting that glass of water when I'm old. That's what we say in Romania. <laughs> but rather because I want them to become healthy, functional adults. And if we're lucky and we work enough, they're also happy as adults. That, that's, that's the purpose, the purpose you were saying. Of course, we don't want patronizing. We don't want paternalistic type of, I'm telling you to do this and so on. But we do want this piece where parents, what they do, they have to serve the kids. It's not like the kids can uh, appear from out of nowhere, and they can go and leave however they want. But this attitude of serving the kids, not the kids, I'm not looking at my team as, uh, you know, knowing little kids, but as people who I am serving with the purpose of, hmm? what do you say about that? Um, strongly, strongly agree. And uh, you put it in a very, very nice frame. Uh, so many things to unpack. If you're a parent, and allow me not to go deep on some of the things that you and I are discussing, um, you're doing two things. You are giving two types of, uh, let's say, support to your, uh, to your uh, children. You give them love. You give them love, give them unconditional love. Um, and then what you do is you give them a sense or you, you help them to to try to find the truth, to mm -hmm. find the try and find the truth. So there is the love and the truth. The love is all about the support. It's about you know I'm with you, I'm encouraging you. You know I, you know I want the best for you. You know, and I'm here to protect you in the right way. And we can double down on what protection mm -hmm. is. I think last time we discussed it. Truth is about I want you to get outside also of your comfort zone. 
and I want to help you challenge yourself. And even as I say those things, which is the support and the challenge or the love and the truth, isn't that exactly what leaders should be doing? And don't we know also from research, uh, Karina, and you know so well that actually the best leaders, the best, the best leaders, actually what they do is that they they really double down when it comes to you know praise, to recognition, to encouragement. There's encouragement, and at the same time there is there is a there is a space to say you can do this better. Mm-hmm. There is more than that. Challenging them a bit more above their condition, so to speak. So I'm giving you enough, but not so much as so that you won't be able to overcome it. So challenging, love and truth. I love you and I'm helping you discover the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as you said, uh, the the analogy is not perfect between family and business. It is not. Yeah, no, no, no. In family, (laughs) you cannot be be fired from family. Family is a family, no matter what. (laughs) In business, uh, things are happening. And it's it's not the same thing, but there's there is a big there's a big uh, big commonality. If you're a parent, if you're a leader, you need you need to think like like a good parent. Mm-hmm. There's there's no question about that. A good parent, yeah. We have to to be good parents because uh, that, um, going further with the with the conversation, um, I'm also looking about the investment mindset. You did mention investment mindset in our discussions and how. We are investing in our kids in a way, right? Because this is the our genes we're protecting, so that we can yeah. uh, from an evolutionary type of point, uh, point of view. But in in a team, having the investment mindset, it means that I'm taking care of you, and I, I can see new potential, and I'm investing yeah. in that potential so that our yeah. team grows, our project do better, and I don't know, we we manage to change the world the way we said we would change the world. Let's, see, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. And investment, as you say, as an investment is a, is a long-term thing. Yes. And so two things. There's a long-term. So it's not about tomorrow. It's not about the next quarter. It's not transactional. It's I'm doing it for you. Now, there is a big thing. I mean, again, let's step into the shoes of a leader. The best leaders, they really are fully, fully invested in the person, not just the, not the professional role, on the person. Mm-hmm. That's number one. The other thing, how do you invest? You don't invest now only by, I don't know, sending people to trainings. Of course, you'll do that. It's important. You invest by the myriad of small things you do every day from when you come in the morning, how you're going to say good morning, how you're going to look, how you're going to, to touch people in the back, how are you going to, for example, make them coffee? How are you going to have a conversation? How are you going to ask them? I used to do that. Two questions, huge, importantly, questions at the end of the day. So question number one, what really was most exciting that you did today? Yeah, that question number one. Obviously, as we said before, whatever excites is creating the right, you know, mm-hmm. you know, also neurochemicals for, for learning. That's number one. Number two, what did you learn? Two simple questions, but you do it every day. That's mm-hmm. the thing. You do it every day. It's like you go into the gym. You do that, not once, you do that every day. And accumulated compounded makes a big big difference mm-hmm. okay yet we're being we're paying so much attention to these people we're being vulnerable for them we're having empathy we're developing you know we, we talked about inspiring engage this is the excitement and making sure people are okay uh we've been parents to them who's mm-hmm. taking care of us i mean yeah who's taking care of me because if I am depleted and have no resources, then I cannot take care of the others. And this is the paradox, right? This is where people stumble upon, okay, shut everything, everything down. I need to be taking care of myself because otherwise I'm going into burnout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, you are, you are very nicely now putting into the context of, uh, you know, self-care versus other care. It's what you and I have been uh, discussing many times, the oxygen mask uh, paradox. Mm-hmm or putting or rushing to put first the oxygen mask, right? And we've heard that many times, and uh, you and I have discussed it with many audiences, and basically, we first of all, let's uh, say where we what we all agree. Of course, of course, you need to be strong. Of course, you need to be strong. You need to be able, you know, to, 
to have enough resources to be able to give. I mean, no, nobody says no. Here's the problem. In the last uh, years, there has been an obsession. There has been an obsession with self-care at the expense of caring about the others. And um, I think you and I, and I think I was uh, giving the statistics that uh, um, even in the research, we see that actually many leaders, they are looking more into how are they going to, first of all, help themselves in order not to suffer burnout. And instead of actually saying, okay, how can I help my team? So there is a natural human tendency to protect myself. We understand that. But here's what we're missing. The big, biggest word of all we haven't discussed today, trust. The most, actually the most powerful way for you, for anyone to really not just survive, but to thrive is to create trust. If you create trust to your teams, to your people, to your family, they will be there for you. That's the thing. They will be there for you. And, they, and you will multiply your effort. So mm -hmm. that's number one. Number two, of course, as we said, of course, you need to have certain routines and you need to be able to take care of yourself, your nutrition, no question. Um, but I think this is, a, this is an important thing to, to, really, to really understand that the more we help the others, the more we help ourselves. Final comment, because you mentioned the word burnout. What is the main, what is the main uh, contributor of burnout? It's, it's not workload. It is not the workload. It's not the load of the work. Actually, it is, it is the climate and the culture within the team. And it's how much I feel supported, how much I feel that the environment is fair, how much I feel that my leader is listening, mm -hmm. how much I feel that you know I am having meaning and purpose in what I'm doing. So what I'm trying to say is that we need to go deeper. If we are to go higher in life, we need to go deeper. And that is the deeper understanding, the deeper, uh, really, say, comprehension of why are you and I, we are uh, claiming and we are believing that serving others is the, is the better way also for our own well-being. Mm -hmm. I want to jump in on this and uh, bring in one of my most sensitive buttons which is fairness yes and sometimes we are held back by this the the, the feeling of wanting things to be fair mm. and we don't serve the others mm. and you and i have talked about how much time is a very valuable resource for me and sometimes when i feel and i understand that somebody will not benefit from my time i will not give it to them i will not serve them i would stop and this is a question that maybe we need to ask when do we stop serving others because okay uh, no question about it i have seen it when i go into organizations and teams one of the things that i do and i've said that so many times to you i did nothing i just stood there and listened and asked questions that went deeper into their issues and at the end, they were like, oh, this was amazing. I did nothing. Yeah, definitely. It, it's missing. We need to stay there. We need to connect. With, we need to create trust. We need to be serving them. But when do we stop? Because at some point, this is, becomes unfair. Of course, we don't look at, at, at uh, always serve with this lens of fairness all the time. I'm listening to you. You should be listening to me as well. I'm uh, helping you get a project. You should help me get a project and so on. So I helped you with your task, you helped me with your tasks, and so on. Yeah. No, but at some point we need to stop, yeah. right? Yes, and actually everything that we are saying, we know that uh, at the end of the day, you know, we need to make judgment calls and we need to, you mm -hmm. know, uh, embed all those things in our life. A few thoughts. Obviously the reciprocity is part of relationships. We know that. And we feel much, much more comfortable when there is a reciprocal exchange. Uh, because we call it fair. It's a fair exchange. It's something which feels that is, that's fine. That's, uh, nobody would say no. I think what we are saying is for, if you want to be exceptional, you need to get outside the comfort zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you are a leader, by default, you have, it's not just to have the right, you have the responsibility. Here where it is, we are living in a society which is full of rights. 
it's my right, it's, uh, you know, it's the vulnerability discussion we had before. Mm-hmm. I want to reverse it. And I want to say you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to give. You have a responsibility to give more than what you will take. That's your responsibility. That, that's the ask. That's why you have a better office. That's why you have uh, also better material. You have better money. And that's why the most important thing, people are trusting you. This is the only reason people are trusting you because you know you're going to be 24-7 their leader. And they're okay with that. And they want you to be that. So I think what I'm trying to say is that and we know the research that Adam Grant has done, right? Which is about the givers, the takers, and the matchers, and who were the most successful. If you are a giver, and if you are a smart giver, I'm not saying you have to be a giver, it's just to be a nice guy all the time. And, you know, because obviously that is another extreme, you're going to be emotionally drained. But if you're coming with a mindset of generosity, how can I give? How can I help? What you said before, very interesting. You said in the meetings that maybe you didn't do anything. You did huge because you showed them that you are interested and by doing that they were able to unfold themselves and to say you know this is what i think so you created the conditions Mm -hmm. this is what we need to do we need to create the conditions Mm -hmm. with gratitude generosity yeah and uh, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah and courage I was thinking about uh, the the fairness and me not giving my time to some people. And I think that's also maybe a part of Always Serve because you spending your time with me at this moment is not something that would benefit you. So uh, in a way, I am serving them in not giving them this opportunity that may not be something they would benefit from. Uh, But yeah, this is not being nice all the time, 24-7 and because this could uh, go in a different place. Nice in the sense of, you know. Yeah. You, you, you can always say, you know, remember the 80-20. 80-20, mm-hmm. we said 80, praise, 20, let's call it uh, critical or let's call it challenge. That is that is the fact in life. And there is a neuroscience behind that. So keep yourself 80% on the positive, or on the giving. On the 20%, you can be more critical, you can be more, you know, you can put more, you know, well-intended, well-intended, positive judgment. That's absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. There are many ways where you can help others without depleting yourself. If you have a network, you can ask somebody else to help somebody else. So, so there are ways you can do that. Mm-hmm. But always keep in mind that the others need to come out well out of the interaction yeah that's always the, I would like the mindset to, to to highlight and to embolden what you just said because this is exactly what i mean and you said it nicer this is exactly the point and it's all about reframing you just reframe things and of course we always make instinctively a, a decision how much should i give to this person should i give or should i not we all do that because we all want we are driven by values what we are saying is as Try to give more. Try to actually reframe. Maybe people don't. Maybe people need help for them to actually express their best potential. Mm-hmm. Be there. Be the person. Be mm-hmm. the person who does that. If you do that, first of all, it's, it's fantastically meaningful. I mean, there is, and you know that. So it's also something that will come back to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. And I, I did see the, the the changes in people in doing that. And you can observe that people change and uh, relationship change and dynamic inside of team changes when you give. Okay, we can talk about always serve mindset three more days, Harry. And we will be talking more about this in the autumn, maybe. I want to close this discussion uh, in mentioning the, the skills that we have identified as being part of this mindset. Mm-hmm. It's a work in progress. But we're building uh, alongside also an assessment so that we can identify how well we do with this mindset. So uh, altruism and kindness, because this is the core of being uh, observing the others. Trust, we, we did speak about it. Inspire and engage. We need to be going there and inspire people and engage them into what we're doing. The true vulnerability, the cognitive and effective empathy and mm-hmm. compassion. Yeah. So these are the skills, guys. So if you have ideas about always serve, we are very, very open to receiving them. Harry, if you want to say something at the end. Yeah, actually what comes into mind, and thank you very much, Karina, for this opportunity. Really, really appreciate what, what you're doing. 
<clears throat> I think what comes into mind is what Goethe was saying. He was saying the, the measure of a man or the measure of the character of the man is how much he or she is giving to people that can do nothing for him. Very powerful. Yeah. Okay. So if we just, uh, you know, give it a, a bit, a bit of thinking and, and again, thank you so much for this, um, for this exchange. Thank you, Harry. So we'll see each other next month in discussing about reinventing yourself. So stay tuned, people. Bye. Bye-bye.